Hey guys, and welcome back to Karen Traveler. Sorry it has taken me so long to get this video out. I'd love to blame it on taking about four hours of footage down to an hour and 15 minutes. But uh, to be honest, it was just a lot of procrastination. My time off generally just, I end up crashing and don't get a lot of productivity stuff done. I'm working on it. A little personal goals there. This is a uh, vlog of the trip down south to visit some of Arizona and New Mexico's southern national park sites and wanted to share it with you. It's going to be kind of long, but there are 10 different sites in here. The first is starting with one of the uh, Salinas Pueblo mission sites outside uh, Santa Fe. I'm going to pull that up here, zip on over. So yeah, kind of a long video. I'm gonna put links in the description below if you wanna to jump to a specific section. Maybe I should have done this as individual videos, but it was over a week, so it fit with the vlog thing. thing. There's also gonna be links in the description below to any gear I mentioned in the video. This isn't really a gear video, but if there's anything that shows up that you're interested in, check that out below. I am an Amazon affiliate, so if you use that link, it helps the channel. It doesn't cost you anything more, but get a little kickback for this, uh, this channel. The goal of this trip was to pick up some of the last national park sites in Arizona and New Mexico, places I hadn't been before. Some were a little close, most were way down south, down by the border, and it was easier to bag them all at once than try to do them individually as road trips. So I had a group of five days off and was able to jump down there and knock out a whole bunch at the same time. Pretty cool. It's fun to just hop in the truck with the dog. I got a blow up air mattress to just throw on the back of the truck and hop in and go with nowhere in particular in mind. Got some kind of, you know, put the big rocks in place and headed out for that, but kind of a flexible trip. And just uh, us in the truck, cruising. If you're not familiar with the channel, the channel is Karen Traveler. My name is Ruben. I'm an ER travel nurse traveling full time in a 25 foot Airstream travel trailer with my dog, Hiker. We have a good time around the country finding adventures as we go. I've said it before, but when I went to travel nursing, it was to live life on my own terms, to be able to go where I want, stay where I want, forever long I want to. And I will never go back to staff nursing. It, it is an absolute uh, amazing journey to do travel nursing. It also lets you stay in an area long enough to really experience things and to kind of learn the area rather than just spending a few days or a week you know, vacationing, you get a whole, usually a 13 week contract to experience the area, the people, get to know the town. It's really awesome. The purpose of this channel is just to share our adventures with you, to prompt you to seek your adventures wherever you can find them, whether it's in your backyard, a day trip, or journeying across the country, but to live a life full of adventure, full of experiences, and to put experiences over things and over possessions, and to really live a full life. Getting into that, this is the first of our stops. These are the Salinas Pueblo missions. They're right outside Santa Fe. There's actually three sites in the grouping. They are each individually uh, time indexed for you below in the description. This is the first one, Abo Mission. It's nestled here in these little grassy hills. Very quiet, peaceful. We had some good weather for this little trip. Warm, especially warm as we got down south and increasingly more buggy as we went south, but yeah, nice day here. These missions were kind of the encounters between the Spanish missionaries, which came to the area, and the Pueblo uh, indigenous people. And they kind of integrated culture and established these as both churches and kind of village compounds. One interesting fact is that Adolf Bandelier, uh, a uh, Swiss-born archaeologist and the person after whom Bandelier National Monument, one of my favorite places, is named, was also one of the first ones to photograph and map these sites. Uh, he traveled throughout a lot of the southwest, visiting a lot of Pueblo ruins, including Pecos National Historic Site, Aztec ruins, El Moro, El Malpais, uh, the Gila cliff dwellings, which you'll see later in this video, Casa Grande, which was in an earlier video around Phoenix, Tonto, also in Phoenix. But it's kind of cool how that all integrates and pulls together a lot of my favorite places that I've been throughout the southwest. You can see here that there's a Native American kiva, which is kind of a spiritual place for ceremonies and things like that, and it's kind of built into the Catholic Church here, so it's really a, a melding of different cultures. And there were also dwellings, and like I said, it's kind of more of a, a village place with a Catholic Church 
built into it a mission than, uh, than just a mission by itself. Surprisingly well built up. This is coming in to the main uh, sanctuary or nave of the Catholic mission. This is where the altar would be up here, or the apse, which is kind of a baptistry area. This is where you'd have like rows of uh, church pews and things like that. Surprisingly well constructed, it's even very level and straight. And all the stones don't have to be very uniform. It uh, came out well, apparently. Very thick. Imagine this would be very warm in uh, you know, winter months. Probably uh, cool in the cool in the summer as well. So typically, these kinds of places tend to trap in cool as well. The national parks do a really good job of posting, you know, explanatory content around their site. So there's usually, you know, some interesting things to read and check out as you walk around. For some reason, the clouds at this site really made the whole thing very dramatic. Kind of a moody situation. And this is headed out to Korai Mission. That is the next closest uh, mission in the, this set of three. You can see there's just a lot of farms out here, a lot of open plain. Beautiful drive though. So this is Korai Mission. One thing to know about the national parks is a lot of well, especially the smaller national monuments, they may only have like one staff member and they can close fairly early. So unfortunately it was about a four hour drive out to this mission area. And then uh, I think 4.30 was the closing time. Uh, so we made this one by like 3.30 or 4. So it wasn't really long enough to do a, a really nice hike. They had some short, you know, mile, two mile walking trails around each of these missions. So the first one I got to spend a little bit more time. This is, I think, the gentleman at the visitor center said this was the one of the biggest missions still standing, and it really does have a dramatic effect. I'll pan down here and you can see it is like walking into a castle. So this is the sanctuary of this mission. Wow. That's and you have like the pews here. You can see the altar or apps straight ahead, and there's the uh, both transepts off to the side. But just a huge dramatic, dramatic effect here. You can see some of the remaining down at the bottom of these walls, there's still some remaining mud plaster there, and typically this whole thing probably would have been plastered and then it's kind of degraded and fallen apart over the years. I don't know whether this stone kind of flagstaff uh, cobbled floor is original or whether that's been restored. It's hard to tell how much restoration they've done. But you can imagine this you know, with people in it and have the pews and icons and everything. It would be pretty, pretty impressive. Towering walls. Again, the big open skies of Arizona really show this kind of thing off. A few clouds can really make an interesting effect. This little area off to the side would have been rooms and dwellings, and it really ended up being kind of like a maze. Hacker and I explored around looking in the various rooms. It's hard to say how tall all of this was, I imagine it was just one floor, but some of these walls may have crumbled a bit in the meantime. Just kind of maze-like, like I said, you're wandering around, finding the next doorway. Doorways leading out.
Typically speaking, these settlements and missions were abandoned for a variety of reasons. It would end up being kind of a combination of famine, disease, and then uh, there were a lot of Apache attacks in this area. So typically speaking, the Pueblo people were kind of like a maze in here a little bit. Kind of included in these villages, and then Apaches were kind of roaming <clears throat> the sky. Uh, bands that raided a little bit more. Let's go this way. Come on. It's very uh, green here. That's going to close us out for Quarai Mission, and we are off to the last. Wow, that's crazy. Which is Grand Quiveria, if I said that even remotely right. There's a beautiful drive out to it, very grassy, little rainbow sun, and I stopped to take some footage out here. Wonderful way to end the evening. Unfortunately, I was arriving past 4.30 at this last site. It was about 45 to 60 minutes past the last one. So by the time I arrived at this site, it was closed. I was hoping to be able to at least like get a glimpse of it, but unfortunately it, it didn't really, you couldn't drive up super close to it with the gate closed, but just a beautiful sunny. Okay, so I'm up here at the last of the uh, Salinas Pueblo mission sites. This is Gran Quivira. I'm saying that right? This was the most remote one. Unfortunately, I got here a little bit after I-35-40, so they close at 5. So, Gran, the last one I saw was the biggest, according to the guy there, so. Probably saw the best. Just hoping I could see a little bit of a drive-by here. So, just out here, next stop will probably be El Paso and the, the National Monument site on the border there. So just out here with Hiker, having a great time, just doing a kind of day trip. I really don't know how many days I'll be out here, so this is just kind of a free flow trip. Go as kind of invent things as we go. But I got uh, mountain house meals, I got the sleeping bag, just gonna do some truck camping. And yeah, it should be a couple of relaxing days. This is the last kind of big trip I'll do before I end the contract here in, here in Arizona. So, relax on the road and uh, find a spot to camp next. So, yeah, pretty spot out here. We're kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Don't really know where the next town is, but having a good time. This was the best shot I could get of the mission. Kind of see this plane leading up to it. It's way up there on the hill. That's the best I could see. And the closest we could get with the gate closed. Again, just a really pretty evening driving out before we found our next spot to camp, which decided to head to Alamogordo. Originally, I was going to try to camp in the Lincoln National Forest up there, but didn't know the area well. I was going to be arriving at night, and that's always a little dicey, so I thought I'd see if uh, Holloman Lake, which is off Holloman uh, Air Force Base, was still there and open. Another pretty evening driving up to it. This was before it got dark. Decided to pull off the side of the road and take a little bit of footage here. Very pretty evening. I spent quite a bit of time in Alamogordo, uh, 14 days at Holloman Lake. I think that was between uh, Quartzsite, Arizona and maybe After Valley of the Gods, I don't remember. When I first got on the road and started, you can see here us arriving in the dark, but thankfully I knew the area, we were the only ones there, and it worked out. You can see a little bit of the lights from Alamo Gordo, which unfortunately is, uh, this is actually the next morning, but Alamo Gordo is unfortunately one of the higher crime cities in New Mexico, of which there are quite a few, but it's not a big town by any means. So this was our campsite last night. Hiker, having a good time this morning. Uh, I debated about going to the uh, Lincoln National Forest. I'm sorry, we're here in uh, Alamo Gordo. White Sands is right over there. So I debated about camping in the Lincoln National Forest. It's a little bit more elevation. Lincoln is that way in those mountains. But uh, I don't know the area super well, and then I thought, hey, you know what? 
back in 2019, one of the 14 day stints I dry camped with the R-Pod was here at uh, Holloman Lake, which is this. So I know the area, you know, it's been almost three years since I was there. So I was hoping it was still open, you know, with COVID, you never know if things have shut down or been closed or whatnot, but yeah, it is still open. And I was the only one here last night. When we got here, it was probably 85, 83. And that was at around nine o'clock. So it's probably kind of a scorcher during the day. Probably not a whole lot of a reason for anybody else to be here. Pretty cool out. Uh, it's about 60, 61, 62. Real pretty little morning here. Uh, on the way to El Paso this morning for Chamazal. National Memorial on the border. A little buggy last night, but that's all right. Not, not as bad as it could have been. But just slept out under the stars. I got one of these blow up, it's just a 20 buck Ozark mattress thing. It had a blower upper fan thing in it, but it was battery powered so that it didn't plug into anything. So that did not help me last night, but I just, uh, huffed and puffed and blew it up so brought the zero degree uh sleeping bag which i just pulled over like a comforter last night and slept on top of the truck didn't feel like bringing a tent figured it's gonna be nice enough most nights to uh not need it so got my little cooking station here so for this morning i've got biscuits and gravy a little propane stove they use for backpacking i'm gonna make that up have some breakfast and then uh, have a nice little morning and get on the road. My little Goal Zero Lantern did a great job. Charged that when I on the way here in the car. Watching a little Seinfeld on the iPad while I had dinner and then make breakfast. So also uh, cooler here. Got some ice last night. Um, some cold drinks today. So a little driving motivation. And yeah, that's it. Just gonna make breakfast and uh, pack up camp, get on the road. Try to keep Hiker from getting in the lake. This is kind of a weird lake. It's got chemicals and junk in it. So anyway, it's pretty though. So that's camp for this morning. Uh, see where tonight brings us. Get back to you. making some biscuits and gravy here at Mountain House. So you add a couple of cups of water, seal it back up after you've stirred it. Let it sit for five minutes and then you come back and stir it again. Yeah, it's like a freeze dried something or other. This is the MSR reactor. It's starting to boil. minutes maybe I've had this biscuits and gravy before it's pretty good sit for a second the drive out from Alamogordo and White Sands National Monument and National Park now I believe I think in 2020 it became a national park which is super cool because it's one of my favorite spots but the drive out towards Las Cruces in El Paso is really pretty it goes through the Oregon Mountains mountain range which is not a high group of mountains you can see here us passing White Sands didn't stop, thought about it. It is one of my favorite and one of the most beautiful spots. If you're ever in that, that area, it's definitely worth stopping. Highly recommend it. Not a big 
area, but easily accessed and just an amazing walk out there. But it's a beautiful drive out this way. You can catch some of the dunes along the highway. Once you're actually in the White Sands National Monument and out, there's like a five mile walk, I think, and there's markers just out on the dunes and you just have to kind of look for the next marker to find your way. Uh, otherwise, you could get lost fairly easily. Again, it's not a huge area, but... Uh... And our next stop will be coming up here, Chamizal National Memorial on the Mexico-U.S. border in El Paso. Right there along the fence. So this is pulling up to it. Chamizal is actually a memorial of the border and of the the Rio Grande. I forget what year it was, but apparently it shifted. And the Rio Grande was the border marker, kind of between New, uh, Mexico and the U.S. So when it shifted its its path, it changed the border, and this was kind of the memorial of remarking the border. There's actually some uh, little marker memorial things that you'll see along the trail here of where the border used to be and then they changed it when the Rio Grande shifted. It's a pretty little park it's just kind of a it would remind you more of a city park it's not a very big or crazy area there is a little visitor center and a few little things to read and you can talk to the staff there which is always interesting. That's some cultural murals and artwork here. This is the trail at the back side of the park, and you can see here, these are the markers I was talking about that mark the old, sorry, kind of jumped away, but they're kind of little obelisk markers that mark the old boundary of the rear grind. It's really a pretty little park, just kind of green space inside El Paso. Great paths for walking. They had had quite a bit of rain, so things are green. There's a little bit of mud around. Here's the actual uh, border crossing, at least for cars. You can see the cars going through there with the customs. There's the Welcome to Mexico sign. You can see there the border, which is actually quite a bit taller and more substantial than I thought, at least in this area. This is probably, I would think, the most built up part of the border. I imagine it gets kind of rudimentary as you go in more isolated areas. A lot of little southwest gardens in this park. You get quite a few very unique plants in the southwest that are kind of characteristic of the area. Very pretty. Again, this is one of the boundary markers, re-established in 1889. And this is the drive out of El Paso. You can look over there on the Mexico side. It gets pretty slummy. It's kind of a dramatic difference between the U.S. side and the Mexico side. Uh, some sketchy neighborhoods over there. drive out. And our next stop is going to be headed back a little bit north and towards the border of Arizona and New Mexico on the New Mexico side to Gila Cliff Dwellings.
National Monument. Which is out a little bit by itself. Not incredibly close to a lot of other things. You can see it here coming up. Silver City is the next thing kind of south from there. It's not really around a whole lot else. Beautiful drive out there. Gets a little bit more back into the New Mexico kind of characteristic territory where you get this a little bit more forested areas. New Mexico's got a little bit more elevation than El Paso would. But just kind of rolling hills here, a few trees, not as much direct desert. There's plenty of grass and really just a pretty drive up this way. You'd think there would have been more cows or cattle, but didn't see a whole lot. It actually took quite a bit to drive into the monument area. I would say probably about an hour kind of in this forested-ish area before we arrived at the monument, and that was off, you know, when, once we got off a main travel road. I don't actually know whether it's pronounced Gila or Gila, but it was established as a national monument by Teddy Roosevelt in 1907 to protect these ruins of the Mogollon people. Unfortunately, they don't let dogs go up with you into the monument. There's other places you can walk the dog within the park, but this is the little bridge over one of the creeks here. I think I've said before there was quite a bit of bugginess going on throughout the whole thing, but this was one of the better sites. I think it's probably the elevation. Kind of got rid of some of the some of the bugginess. Not quite as humid as Texas was. A lot of these little bridges leading up to the actual cliff dwellings. Not a long or difficult hike. I think it was probably a mile, maybe a mile and a half. A couple of these little bridges crossing over the stream here. And then there was a little bit of elevation leading up to the monument itself and the cliff dwellings, but uh, some pretty well designed steps. So, this is a Gila or Gila cliff dwellings. Pretty cool. Gonna get up closer. Much like many other cliff dwelling ruins, like Bandelier or Walnut Canyon, this is built in a bit of a canyon, as you can see here. And of course, you'd have cliff sides in which to build dwellings. You'd have water access with usually a stream or a river down at the bottom, and you'd have protection from floods when the dwellings can be built up further into the cliff than the water. out the front said uh, this is one of the most intact ruins ever. If they ever 
had bat problems. Nice uh, breeze through here. Good ventilation. like how these things get so polished in national parks. I'm pretty happy with this camera. It seems to be keeping up pretty well in the uh, low light. This is the Apple iPhone 12 uh, Pro Max, which I mainly upgraded to from the 10 because of the camera. <sighs> you have to crawl around in some of these places. My understanding of these kind of things is where logs uh, would be and then they'd put a roof on them. Wow. Let's see what people have been touching the rock. Pure too. Put this away to go down. Now that is view. This place in the whole um, Mimbus Valley is different than any other place I've been in New Mexico. It's so pretty. I think uh, the last elevation sign I saw said we were at 74. So good bit of elevation. Probably why all the pine trees here. Gosh, it's pretty. I called a bit of an audible on the next stop 
because I passed this unique site in Arizona called City of Rocks on the turnoff to go to the Gila Cliff Dwellings. And I thought, on the way back, I'll hit it anyway. Might as well pull off and check that out. I think I'd seen it in like a top five, top ten of Arizona State Parks. And this was absolutely worth the stop. This is one of the most amazing places I've seen. Very unique place. Kind of just an outcropping of kind of bouldery rocks in the middle of nowhere. And it would remind you of like Joshua Tree or Alabama Hills, one of those locations. You can see it start to come up here over the plain. Unfortunately, the visitor center was closed, so some of the history and, and all that uh, wasn't accessible, but I'm not sure what caused these formations, but very, very unique. It actually had a pretty developed area for RVs and camping. If you wanted to camp, you can camp among the rocks, or kind of you can see some RVs out there to the side. There's a small campground, which I believe uh, has full hookups, at least some. Again, I was hoping to get in the visitor center here, but unfortunately it was after hours. So I'm here at uh, City of Rock State Park. Now, from the look of it from the road, so I just saw this on the way to uh, Gila uh, Cliff Dwellings. So I feel like people have mentioned this before. And uh, I saw, at least from the road, really Another great park where dogs are welcome, so Hiker was able to walk with me. There's bunches of paths just in between the rocks. There's kind of a circular road all the way around these rock formations, and then there's a little campground that you saw to the right pulling up, and then there's a campground kind of behind all this rock formation at a smaller rock formation as well. So the circular road goes around, and then there's kind of interweaving paths in between a lot of the rocks that you can take and piece together a trail or a walk. Here on a little hill is another group of rock formations. This is so pretty. It's just coming out here in the middle of a field. These rock boulders kind of remind me of Joshua Tree. favorite kind of place, just something you stumble across, not planned. Just one place to the next and find a cool place to stop. This is super cool. This is so wild. I feel like you could run up to the top of any of these little hills. This uh, is the uh, what trail. Something. I forget what trail they call this bay. It's like a three, three and a quarter mile trail. So we don't really have time for that. We gotta go uh, get going towards uh, Coronado National Monument. But um, I wish I had more time to hike. 
find our way along so let's get down as many as we like. goes into a maze of these boulders. If it wasn't that I had to have to keep going to get closer to tomorrow's spots, I would absolutely stay here. So pretty. We've got some RV spots. I think they've even got some uh, full hookup spots. I saw 50 and lifted on their, their site. Okay, so I'm closing us out from uh, City of Rocks State Park in New Mexico. This is absolutely worth stopping by. Highly recommend. This is, you know, the best adventures and the best places are the ones that you don't plan on, that you just kind of stumble across by accident. And this is one of those places. So, I mean, this is absolutely, absolutely beautiful. City of Rocks State Park. Definitely putting this on my bucket list to come back to in the future, but for now, Heading on to Coronado National Memorial, again, on the U.S.-Mexico border. I'd almost visited this site on the trip to Phoenix when I went down south, but unfortunately the little mission I was at down there was too far. It was kind of, you'd have to loop way, way around, but it was kind of down there by Organ Pipe Cactus National Monument and Tamakakori National Historic Park, which was another mission site. Unfortunately, this was our drive into the area. The plan was to find dispersed camping in Coronado National Forest, which I had looked up ahead of time, but uh, it's never a good idea to try to find a place you've never been in the dark, especially when you've never been there before. And it turned out this was a little sketchier and more problematic than one might think. It turned out all the forest access roads were actually through and then behind little neighborhoods of actual established houses. And it was not great roads when you got there. So this is where we ended up. So unfortunately, this was my uh, camp last night. 
found a spot um, to spurs camping in the Coronado National Forest, but saw this sign. And especially in the middle of the night at like midnight, it didn't seem super safe or wise to do that. And I wouldn't have got any sleep now with that being up there. So, there's no loves or travel stop close. Not that wouldn't, you know, kind of defeat the purpose of coming out here to be ready for Coronado uh, National Memorial. So that being said, came out here to Walmart. But it had some pretty good reviews on all stays for um, you know, being quiet and being okay as a place to park overnight. So, and it was. I just happened to have a... Uh, uh, face mask as part of this travel pillow kit. Worked right. I don't know what woke me up. Probably hiker. Here it is 630 and sun's well up and I had no idea. So the face mask worked great. I just used the <sighs> used the sun thing overnight. But luckily there's also a Starbucks close, so I'm gonna go get some coffee. And uh, Coronado opens at eight, and then we're off to Chiricahua and Fort Bowie after that, and that'll finish up the day. And then headed home the back way. We'll come out somewhere around Williams, I think. But yeah, just pulled up, cracked the windows, watched the little Seinfeld. Got pretty stuffy, so I did turn the car on. It's still on, it was on overnight. Didn't really burn through too much gas, so. Anyway, gonna get the car, uh, get this show on the road and uh, go get some coffee, let hiker out here. You know, the uh, casualties of driving at night with your high beams. One shield gets absolutely plastered by these bugs. I don't know what bugs these are, but they're all of it. After our overnight in a Walmart parking lot, we drove out to Coronado National Memorial, which is not a celebration, but a memorial to the cultural impact that the conquistador Francisco Vasquez de Coronado brought when he brought the expedition through this area, through Southwest America and into South America in 1540. This park was originally formed in 1941 as the Coronado International Memorial. It was meant to be a mirror of the Waterton Glacier International Peace Garden on the U.S.-Canada border in North Dakota, which I've also been to, although I don't have a whole lot of footage of that. However, while Mexico expressed interest, apparently they never followed through with making a mirror park on the opposite side of the border, which would have then been joined into one park. So in 1952, President Harry Truman designated this a national memorial for the U.S. and run by the National Park Service. So this is Coronado National Memorial on the uh, Mexico U.S. border, which is kind of cool as we just came from El Paso, which is also on the border. You can actually see the border wall out here. It kind of converts to uh, fencing, I guess, as it goes up there. Very pretty out here. It's greener than I thought. Um, talking to the guy at the at the uh, park center. Uh, they've had a lot of rain, so things are pretty green. <clears throat> things are also super buggy. Um, I was going to do a short hike with Hiker, and there's only two trails you can go on. Uh, and one's just like a short nature walk thing. The other one's a crest trail, which I think goes up over some of this, which would have been cool, but that is closed for um, Homeland Security reasons, which sounds a little sketch. Um, but on another note, even doing the nature trail, it is super 
buggy out here. Like just swarms of flies everywhere. It's hard to even keep them off you. So that doesn't sound super enjoyable. So I think we're gonna move on and head to uh, Chiricahua. But this is uh, Coronado National Memorial on the Mexico-US border. Pretty, pretty area. Second to last stop is Chiricahua National Monument in southeastern Arizona, about 36 miles uh, south of Wilcox, Arizona. Chiricahua was established in 1924 to preserve a volcanic upheaval with many hoodoos and balancing rocks in the area, located in the Chiricahua Mountains of southeastern Arizona. Leading up to Chiricahua is a pretty big plain of just farms and flatlands before you hit the mountainous area. Again, pretty buggy. The car got kind of creamed with a bunch of bugs. But as we headed back north, things got a little less humid, a little less buggy. This is arriving at the Chiricahua National Monument. I would list this as one of the top places we visited and definitely recommend it. It's a little bit out of the way, takes a little bit to get there, but this is a really unique, really beautiful site. There's a nice scenic drive up to Maasai Point that takes you through a great deal of the landscape here. You start at this point near the visitor center and then I believe it was an eight mile drive and then back. Quite a few trails here. They don't allow dogs on most of the trails so that is an issue. I didn't get to do as much hiking as I would have preferred as a hiker there. As you can see, when we start driving, the rock formations start here. Really, really beautiful and different than a lot of other places I've seen. As we rise up out of Bonita Canyon, you can see here at Maasai Point that you really start to see the, the hoodoos for which this place is known. Excellent scenic view here, and you can see down outside the mountains to the valley below. So I can't go down here with Hiker, unfortunately, but uh, this is quite the view. Very pretty. This reminds me of the hoodoos at Bryce. But... Wow, that's crazy. It's like City of Rocks, but with pillars. Wish I had time to do this though. in more uh, depth. Well, cut at the top of the moon.
On the little nature trail at the side point, there's a cool little observation tower area. You can go up and take a look at the panoramic here. Just taking a look here at some of the local wildlife. We didn't see a whole lot in this area. There's the occasional skitter around. So we found a about two mile round trip trail that is okay with Hiker being on it, on a leash. So we're walking that, get him a little walk in for the day. And then we will just have, um, Fort Bowie, one last NPS site, and then we're off for home. So this is about uh, noon right now. This should take about an hour, I think. And then about 45 minutes to get to Bowie, see if there's a short trail we can do there. And then moving on. This uh, reminds me of some places in California with kind of the scrubby, scrubby oaks and the grass. What these things are. <laughs> it's just possums. Yeah. It's funny. Little monkeys. Contained within the monument is the Fairway Ranch, which was established by Swedish immigrants and run in this canyon. Wow, look at that. There's two of them. Look like just freestanding fireplaces. Maybe it's for the workers here? Maybe to cook on? Huge. And this would be the super cute Fairway Ranch. Very pretty. This is more of Fairway Ranch. It's kind of nestled here among the rocks. <laughs> Bathtub. That's cool. Hikers getting underfoot again. <laughs> in porch with a chimney. 
It seems like it has kind of a Scandinavian feel to it. Cherikawa National Monument. Beautiful. Super buggy though. Pretty much eaten up by mosquitoes. And that's with spray on. But some of that's happened over the last few days at different spots. Apparently the mosquitoes went dormant in Gallup uh, several weeks before they went out here. Um, they may actually get more rain down here than we did in Gallup. I don't know. Anyway, gotta finish our walk at about 2.7 back to uh, the visitor center and then off to Fort Bowie. So fun side fact, while I've been doing pretty good on the GoPro batteries, I brought three of them and just shooting short clips for B-roll for the ride out and uh, batteries have been doing fine, but I must have forgotten to format the card before I started shooting video. So, <clears throat> the card's full. Just filled up this afternoon. And I left one clip going longer than I, longer than I thought. I had brought a uh, card reader for the CF Express card, but not for the SD card from the GoPro. So, <clears throat> um, gonna go GoPro-less for the rest of the trip, which is fine. I got plenty of B-roll, but I was looking forward to some of the drive back being pretty. So unless I turn this thing on and sh wave it around the car, uh, not as much B-roll for going back. Stop it. Stop. Hiker? No. No. Come on. Just here taking a well deserved break. Getting a little cool off and a drink. Not nasty looking water, but oh well. Nice little breeze up. Cooler under the shade. I got about a mile left. Okay, we just finished about five miles on this trail and uh, ready to go. So that finishes us out for Chiricahua National Monument and off to Fort Bowie. National Historic Place, I think. So, uh, we're gonna check that out and then head it home after that. It's been kind of a warm day today. wild is this? It's on the way to Fort Bowie. Look at that. It's wide open as far as you can see. After an eight mile unimproved road, uh, we are here at Fort Bowie. That is uh, Trails Our Dog Friendly Trails, so it is we. Um, but yeah, it's a hike in, hike in uh, trailhead. So you park and then it's a mile and a half in, mile and a half out, I believe. So I'll look around for a stamp for my uh, book. We're gonna start. We're the only ones here right now, so there were like two trucks I passed coming in, but right now we're, the we're just taking a nice easy walk out towards those mountains. You would think one would put a fort on a hilltop, 
There's a vantage point, but it seems like we're headed down to a valley. I don't know. I don't build forts. I'm guessing this is the first glimpse we're getting of uh, Fort Bowie. Looks like a cemetery up ahead. Kind of neat. The signs tell a story of uh, this Chiricahua chief, Cochise. I guess some boy was kidnapped. They blame the Apaches. Some uh, military guy came out, and uh, violence ensued. These look like they've been maintained, or. Redone, I guess the park's doing that. I'm telling you, these bugs are out of control. It's a lot of just flies. Some of the flowers recently. Next to a couple of these people, I wonder if that means they were like a sheriff or something. Let's see. Uh, private United Indian War veteran. <laughs> Killed by Indians. Private GAR. Cherikawa Apache Indian Agency. I guess, <clears throat> from a short read of the signs, I guess it was like a U.S. government agent that was supposed to oversee the Native Affairs, I guess. Apache Camp. seem to be Apache Spring. Please do not drink. <laughs> I'm guessing this is a cistern for the well, that, or the uh, spring there. Full of water. This looks like it's gonna be a bit of a reveal. Yeah, here we go. Looks like the visitor center is closed, but they have a passport stamp right here, which is super cool. I'm just going to stamp my book with those. The chairs are cabled down in case you might try to walk the one and a half miles out with them.
Yeah, my phone's overheating, so hopefully I can get this. We've got old Fort Boy, which I may or may not stop by. It's a long day already. Got a little ridge trail out here. Alright, gotta head back down and do the ruins trail and then head on out of here. Alright, second Fort Bowie. Fire. Some more of a cistern, I guess. The rattlesnake will respect its privacy stuff is right on. Adobe buildings. So <clears throat> definitely check out the video I did of uh, Fort Union. I'll link that up above if you are interested in that. It's probably a more kind of complete fort than this. This is still pretty cool. I wonder what ultimately was its demise. Guardhouse. Assistant storehouse. What is that? Provisions. I don't know what that was. Old hospital. Is this this little building or that one? So I guess all things considered, this was kind of up on a hill. And I guess this is Apache Pass between that mountain and some of these. Post Trader Sutler Store. So I think that's what was in the picture of the, the traders coming down from the hill. This was kind of the first thing on the hill. Day this canteen burned. Oh. Hmm. Just a house school. Hmm. Must have been. Interesting. Atchison's office. and mess hall. Infantry barracks. Yeah. I always think it's funny how these forts have this uh, flagpole that looks more like the mast of a ship. I don't know if that's something taken from like Navy ships or what the deal is. Got some more restoration going on up here. Row. Officer's quarters slash a hill. More officer's quarters. That whole little row there should be officers. Commanding officer's quarters. Oh wow. That's quite the construction. Let's see, you got the big time. Hospital steward's quarters. New hospital in Stewart's Quarters. Yeah, well that first one wasn't much of anything. So I suppose back in the day there wasn't a whole lot you could do. So why have a big hospital? As you saw from the cemetery, it's like those that were attacked were dead. <clears throat> Alright, last building up here. <clears throat> Reservoir. Caution? Yeah. Yeah. So my guess is they would bring um, water up the hill from the spring in buckets probably and fill this. Probably covered so it wouldn't evaporate. Clay lined. And then, uh, of course we're uphill. for expansions on those four, I don't know. If one fell down in there, it would be hard to get up. Cool. Ingenious. More officers' quarters. Assuming the Adobe part was just part of it. 
This is probably another whole row. Yeah. Anyway, this is the cavalry barracks of the last one came off though. Super cool. So I've wondered for a while, the iPhone has a tendency to, bar to darken the screen on uh, particularly bright days. And I think it's a mechanism for um, protecting against heat. Overheating problem is not helped by the fact that I'm shooting in 4K at 60 FPS during my abandoned captivity. Interesting. Calorie kitchen. Are you hot? I'm trying to cool off. I'm trying to watch out for rattlesnakes here. Cavalry mist hall. Butcher shop. Steam engine pumps and ice machine. What the heck is an ice machine? <coughs> I wonder if this was part of the original. Set up or not. I'm trying to do short clips with the siphon overheating, <clears throat> but it still uh, seems to be turning off. Oh, look, a wagon. Hmm. Interesting. All right, I think that's gonna wrap it up. We're out here at Fort Bowie. I don't know that I'm going to do the old Fort Bowie. Um, it's been kind of a long day and we've been for a and hikers poop too, so I think we're going to call it a day. Sorry, one last thing. I forgot about this thing. It's kind of a different construction than the rest of it, so I'm kind of curious what it, what it was for. And powder magazine. That's why it's away from everything else and probably why it's so solid. See what, uh, see what that business back here is. Gun shed and artillery. Yep. And again, that's why it's away from the fort. So it didn't blow up. All right, I'm finished here at Fort Bowie. Uh, car's cooling down, hikers had some water, had some shade. Um, all right, back there is uh, in the notch is where Fort Bowie is. So eight mile drive out, this ended up being uh, five mile hike between going there and then doing the tour around the room. So this is finishing us up in uh, Arizona. This is, I think there's only one or two more national park sites I haven't been to in Arizona. So that's kind of cool. And New Mexico's pretty much done. I gotta look at that, but I think it's pretty much done. No, uh, Kapulin uh, Volcano is the last one. So I'll hit that next time. Um, but that's gonna close us out here at uh, Fort Bowie. And we're gonna get on the road in uh, probably about six hours back home. Thank you.